This video is going to show you how to break the initial velocity up into horizontal and vertical components. This is like what we did with planar motion where it just gave you a vertical list of givens or a horizontal list of givens. Here what's going to happen is you're going to have the two. So vertically for projectile motion we know the acceleration is going to be 9.80 meters per second squared and every acceleration has its own list of givens so that's why it has its own column. Horizontally the acceleration is going to be 0 meters per second because we're not going to have any forces going left and right so it's going to have its own column with an acceleration of 0. So here it sets up just like a planar motion. The difficulty is going to be in how the initial velocity is described and being able to take what we're given and breaking up into horizontal and vertical pieces. So here's how it's done. Typically what will happen is for a projectile motion problem, you'll be given the initial velocity at an angle that, like what's drawn here um, with initial velocity of 7.28 meters per second and the angle of 15.95 degrees. Now I've got to break this up into horizontal and vertical pieces. In other words, I've got to make this into a right triangle. The horizontal leg of the right triangle is the red vector. And what I can do is use trig to figure out how to find the length of the red vector. So when I look at this, I know that cosine theta is equal to the adjacent side length divided by the hypotenuse's length. Then I'll rearrange this to solve for the adjacent length. So cosine theta is equal to the hypotenuse length. And throw in my numbers for my picture. So the adjacent length is equal to the cosine of the angle, 15.95 degrees, times the hypotenuse, 7.28 meters per second. When I do the calculations, that gives me 7 meters per second. So now the horizontal side is 7 meters per second. I've got to find the other piece of the triangle. Notice when I make the triangle, the two red vectors, they are connected tip to tail. This shows vector addition, and that's important. So here's my other vertical component of the velocity. I'll use trig again to find its length. In this case, that's the opposite side to the angle, the opposite side to the angle. So what I'm going to do is use the sine function. Sine theta is equal to the opposite side length divided by the hypotenuse side length. So the opposite length is going to be the sine theta times the hypotenuse length. So opposite length sine 15.95 degrees times 7.28 meters per second. And that gives me 2 meters per second. So the opposite side is 2 meters per second. So again, I'm given the hypotenuse when I'm given the initial projectile motion um, setup. And then what I use is trig to find the adjacent side and the opposite side to find those lengths. The next step is putting them in my table of givens. So the 2 meters per second is vertical, so that's going to go in the vertical column for my table of givens. The 7 meters per second, that's in the horizontal direction, so that'll go in the horizontal column for the table of givens. And so now when I look at my table of givens, I can see that I have two values. I need one more value in the vertical column in order to solve uh, questions with kinematics. And horizontally, I need one more given in the horizontal column as well in order to solve problems with kinematics.